hope that the listeners enjoy this information as much as I enjoy presenting it to you. If you would like for Black Holes to continue, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Now on with the shit show. A bogey has been marked, criticized and crucified. Yahweh being Yahweh is the only way, the only truth, and the only lie. If you like to hear about murder, extortion, and all kinds of fuckery, well, you're in the right place. If you're black and you live in any mid to major city in the United States of America, then you probably have heard of the Hebrew Israelites. They're usually on street corners dressed in all purple with gold accents, debating, preaching, and damn near intimidating anyone who strolls by their soapbox. Them dudes don't play and they're serious. But they aren't the reason why we're here. In the 1980s, one of their ex-members left to create his own sect, which was more like a religious mafia than a religious group. Born in October 27, 1935 in Kingfisher, Oklahoma, Hewlett Mitchell Jr. was the oldest of 15 children. God damn. His father, Hewlett Mitchell Sr., was a minister of Antioch Baptist Church of God in Christ in Enid, Oklahoma. His mother, Pearl, was the pianist and sang for the congregation. After leaving Oklahoma, Mitchell Jr. pimped off to the military and then attended law school. He moved to Atlanta, Georgia in the 1960s where he joined the Nation of Islam and took the name Hewlin X. After leaving the NOI in the late 60s, he became a faith healing Christian preacher and named himself Father Mitchell fashioning himself after Father Divine and Samuel Father Jehovah Morris, two black American ministers and self-proclaimed divine connectors to God who were active during the early 20th century. Mitchell arrived in Florida in 1978, where he gathered members of the city's black Hebrew Israelite congregations and founded the Nation of Yahweh. The Nation of Yahweh touched down in Liberty City in 1979, and let me paint the scene for you. Around the same time as they landed in Liberty City, it was already a powder keg. For context, in 1955, the city ran Interstate 95 straight through Overtown, one of the city's blackest neighborhoods. In doing so, this displaced several black Americans. And then in the 70s, Larry Shockley, a white police officer, shoots and kills 21-year-old black man. Then a highway state trooper molests a 10-year-old black girl and only gets probation. Another wrong house drug raid on a black school teacher. And then we fast forward to 1979, where Arthur McDuffie, a black man, was murdered by a Miami police officer. There was an alleged cover-up and eventually the cops were acquitted. The black residents were not having it, leading to a riot that left 200 dead and caused more than $100 million in property damage. city was fertile for a black savior. Broadly classified as a branch of the black Hebrew Israelite movement, Mitchell preached that God and all his disciples were black and that black Americans were the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. He also characterized whites and Jews as infidels and oppressors and Mitchell emphasized loyalty to himself as the son of God, Yahweh. He changed his name to Yahweh Ben Yahweh, which means God, son of God. Mitchell's businesses and charity efforts earned him the respect of the community. The mayor of Miami, Xavier Suarez, declared Yahweh Ben Yahweh Day on October 7, 1990. In short order, he amassed two things, a large following and a large real estate portfolio. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years, he guided the nation to amass an estimate of $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the United States and 16 other countries. 
members dressed in all white, complete with white turbans referred to as diadems. According to People Magazine, to prove their loyalty, men would line up and drop their pants. Any male that was not circumcised, their leader, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, would circumcise them for them. Followers were sent into the streets in order to collect $10 a day. And if they failed, they faced consequences. They were brought into a cafeteria that came to be known as the Room of Understanding. According to ex-follower Amani, basically you're on a concrete floor with a thin layer of carpet. You were made to kneel down on your knees and keep your back straight for four or five hours. In that room, there was also a guard with sticks that made sure you stayed like you were supposed to. After being sent away to start another temple in another state, Amani returned to find his wife distant, and the leader he viewed as a father figure now cold towards him. He later learned that Yahweh Ben Yahweh had been convening a weekly closed door midwife class where the leader led women in genital examinations along with placing their mouth on another's private area to give CPR to the unborn child, Amani says. He also invited oral sex on himself. He would ask how many of the sisters wouldn't mind having the king's seed, Amani said come to find out he was having sex with my wife with the revenues they collected on the streets they packaged hair care products and tonics and beverages t-shirts wine and more which they shipped to a network of temples all across the country they boasted a membership of 12,000 in the state of florida alone yahweh required his members to flip a certain amount of product in order to return for food and shelter at some point in the 80s it is alleged that the group turned violent on Friday, October 13th, a Miami, Florida construction foreman was checking his work site and came across a decapitated body. Detectives identified the body as Ashton Green through his fingerprints. After finding his last known address, the investigation leads them to his mother's house, who mentioned that he was a member of the Yahweh Nation. This eventually led detectives to the house of a group of Hebrew Israelites who had become disillusioned with the Yahwehs and disavowed the group. And to signify this, they wore colorful turbans instead of the traditional white ones. Among this group of Hebrew Israelites was Ashton Green's roommate, Carlton Carey, who told detectives that he and his roommates were attempting to leave the nation of Yahweh after the leader, Yahweh ben Yahweh, claimed to be the son of God. In fear of retribution from the Yahwehs, Carey declined to work with the officers any further. The day that Carlton Carey and his wife Mildred returned home from the police station, they were both shot in their home. Carlton was DOA and Mildred fighting for her life after being shot in the chest and having her throat slit by a machete, the same weapon used to kill Ashton Green. But miraculously, she survives and told investigators that she was certain that her attackers were from the Yahweh's. Detectives go to the Yahweh temple to get answers, but when interacting with its members, all they gave them was the same answer, and I quote, praise Yahweh. Through a spokesperson, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, aka Hugh and Mitchell, claimed to know nothing about the murders. But since the nation of Yahweh spanned across 13 states, the murders landed them on the FBI's radar. And in 1986, in Delray, Florida, while soliciting neighborhoods, you know, like Jehovah's Witnesses, they were eventually forced to leave. Later, around 2 a.m., the neighborhood that kicked them out was firebombed. Police suspected that they were responsible, and this was later confirmed through an FBI informant that the FBI planted inside the organization. The informant also stated that he took part in the brutal slang of Ashton Green. He stated that Ashton was considered to be a threat as he started openly questioning Yahweh Ben Yahweh's authority. The informant stated that Green was brutally beaten before he was driven to a remote area and then beheaded. Now, during the time that the authorities were investigating the murder of Ashton Green, another body comes up, but this time with his ears severed and only one was left at the scene. The body was that of Raymond Kelly. Missing from the victim's car was a 38 revolver that the victim kept on him at all times, according to his wife. 
And then, after a double murder at one of the many apartment complexes that belonged the police to Yahweh, eventually many believed guy that it was claimed to be two residents spoke out publicly and claimed to be 400 years and refused to move and was also complex. a member of the Yahweh Nation. Though, what Found said. during his arrest was a 38 revolver, and after further ex examination of the gun, it was revealed to be the same gun as the victim who was missing his ears. Now, authorities got homie on three bodies, which nominated this nigga for the electric chair, bringing down a media frenzy around the Yahweh's and more police scrutiny, and caused ex-members to come out and share their stories. Yahweh Ben Yahweh's own relatives reached out to the police and stated that she had witnessed a man beaten to death at her brother's request, allegedly because he'd been being disrespectful to Yahweh. They was really out here moving like the mob. Now you remember the cat who claimed to be 400 years old, the one police linked to the three different bodies? Well, dude turned out to be Robert Rozier, an ex-NFL ball player who played defensive end for the St. Louis Cardinals. He was still locked up and not snitching whatsoever. But in an effort to clean up his own image, Yahweh Ben Yahweh publicly denounced the man on local TV, causing bro to turn fed and spill the beans on everything he knew about the organization. He told the feds that he knew about 20 different murders ordered by their leader, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. He confessed about the double murder. Bro was confessing to killing Raymond Kelly, the cat who was missing the ears, and confessed to another murder in which the victim had his ears removed as well. He claimed to be Mr. Yahweh himself, to kill as many white devils as he could and bring them his ears. In October of 1990, the FBI issued a secret arrest warrant for him and a dozen other followers in what the feds dubbed Operation Jericho. And in November 6, 1990, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was arrested in New Orleans at the Hotel Monteleon. Mr. Yahweh was charged with extortion, racketeering, and murder in the aid of racketeering, and the feds claimed they found five hitmen that Mr. Ben Yahweh sent to hit them before they could be arrested. In May of 92, Mr. Yahweh and six of his followers were convicted of conspiracy to commit murder and received 19 years by the feds. And in 2006, only 14 years into his bid, he died of prostate cancer. He remained the group's leader until his death, but the Yahweh nation is still active and still believe that Mr. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is their messiah. They claim to have abandoned their past racism, according to their Wikipedia page, and they seem to still be going to this day. Currently, it is unknown how many followers are still left in the organization, but it's crazy to me how many people believed in this dude in the first place. But I'm eager to hear from you, the audience. What do you think? Is this just a cult or another misunderstood religious group that was set up by the man to prevent the black messiah?